All right, folks, we are at Kentucky Lake, Paris Landing. We're excited, first day here. We're doing a little pre-fishing for the Crappie Masters event, prepping the boat. We just got here, putting on some uh, some paddles. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the new thing we've uh, started. So it's gonna be a beautiful day. It's calm, rainy, that's why we got the rain gear on, but it's gonna be warm, 75. We're ready. Mar Marcus yeah. is gonna be shedding that, uh, that hoodie. Oh yeah. The boat's ready. Stay tuned. Live scope action coming your way. Here we go. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. And there you have it. We're on Kentucky Lake. Don't get much better, folks. Great memories here on Kentucky Lake. Can't wait to make new ones with Marcus. Um, and. Uh, we're looking, we're gonna put 110% in, folks. We're gonna put the time in to learn this lake. We've got basically quite a few days to, to practice. This is close to our home, so it's a lot more convenient than what we're accustomed to. And uh, we're gonna go farther, further, do everything we can to make a good showing here. Putting in the time, that's what it's about, folks. Always about putting in the time. That's right, folks. It's about putting in the time. If you want to be great at something, you have to put in the time. There are no excuses from three pound fishing if we don't succeed in a tournament because it's about putting in the time. But let me tell you, this episode right here, this is fantastic. We're going to actually put three days together in this one episode, and you're going to see the entire pre fish for the Kentucky Lake Crappie Masters event. So please do me a favor, subscribe. Hook up three pound fishing. All right, we got this is two big fish in the boat. Unfortunately, we were not filming when we did that, but I'll show you. Well, I'll just show you one of them. Good fish right there. It's got a little eggs in it, I think, but having a tough time right now. Um, we've been through so much structure on Kentucky Lake. There's just a ton of structure, and um, we're not seeing a lot of fish on the structure. We've tried shallow. We've we've tried deep. Um, and we ran into a couple of them, but outside of that, kind of uh, on struggle mode right now, just trying to figure it out. So we're on the northern part of the lake. We're right near Paris Landing. So compared to, I think, where we're going to be fishing, which will be down near Big Sandy, that area, um, we won't. Even, we don't actually know if we'll actually be able to make it up here during the tournament time if we choose to stay down there at all. At, at all. So um, I think we're gonna fish around here a little bit more, and then. We will probably trailer and go down that way to for the second half of the first day here so we're gonna get you some active captain marcus is looking we're bothered by all those carp you can see all those well they're either drums carp or something but there's a ton of them and we wonder if that's what's affecting all the fish here that wasn't the case in July last year. That's what, you know, that's different, but they were all north of the bridge last year. And this, this year, it seems like we're seeing a lot more of those type of marks south of the bridge. So we might need to go really, really south. We'll see. So the only experience I have on Kentucky Lake is the tournament time I put in last year. So basically about four or five days prior to an event, that's what I learned, which was primarily the north side. And I can tell you during this half day, they weren't there. Just missed this beauty. Few and far between today, but uh, we're making progress. We're learning. You want this one? And that one marked good. That's pathetic. <laughs> So we're gonna tie. You guys are bouncing around out there, right there. This lost my bait. The fish took it. So we are going to tie on another one. And I'll tell you, with a with a uh, with braid, which is what I fully believe in now, is braid. And I think the crappie industry will be going exclusively to braid. Uh, the live scopers, that is. The reaction is just incredible. Tactile feel of braid of, the, of this microfine braid. 
But anyway, tying a loop knot is a little bit more difficult, I have to admit. And um, because the braids are so micro fine, they will find any any hole in a the eyelet. But loop knot, bring it through the eyelet. I go a little bit bigger with a braid, and I try to suck it right back down to that that quarter inch if I can. But see, even that one there is about a half inch. It's about a half inch, and uh, I, I try my hardest to get it better. But with braids, it's a little bit more difficult to work that knot down. So if you have any suggestions, help a brother out. But that's what I'm going with right now. It's not the carrot that I typically use, but it's a version of the carrot with a yellow tail. That's a good fish. I can get the hook out. He wanted it so bad. Check that out, folks. That's a solid fish out here right now. Spawn. All right, folks, we're about to go to day two, but at the end of day one, we caught this fish. Marcus caught this fish. We don't know what it is. Do me a favor, comment below. Tell us what you think this fish is, because let me tell you, we got three opinions as to what this fish is from even locals, which really blows us away. So. Check it out, give us your opinion, we'd love to hear it. It's the next morning on Kentucky Lake. We're still learning. We're going to keep that. We got a good one in the bucket. I'll show you that one later. But good morning. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe. The Kentucky Lake boat, folks. All right. Well, we're still trying to learn it. We're, we're, we're kind of concluding right now is, uh, that's, a, that's a good black. Um, the fish are a little shallower than we thought, so we're trying to focus more in the 12 foot range. But that's a keeper. Mm. Fishing one of these wedge heads. Big old wedge head. Wedge head. But it's, a, it's just a smaller version of a carrot, which I think they're liking that small size. Fourteen foot depth of water, and the fish are sitting right around twelve foot. And that's uh. So how do we conclude that these were the coves that we were going to start at? Well, basically, what I like to look for are creek channels that can't come off the main body of water. So any creek that comes off of, say, Kentucky Lake that goes deep into a cove. That's typically the, the, the coves that I'm gonna fish. There's no secret there. So I wanna fish the, the ledges of it. I wanna see a lot of different depth changes. And those are the things that I target. So we identified two coves and that's how we ended up here. Well, it's another beautiful day on Kentucky Lake. Hot, we got seven fish. We're staying in this cove today, that's what we decided. It's a very big cove. What was it called again? Bird something? Wow, good 
Good fish, Marcus. Bam. Better folks. Let's get rid of some of these small ones here. All right, update. We got seven fish. We got good weight. We're probably sitting around eight pounds, which doesn't sound like much, but I think on this lake this time of year, I think nine to eleven pounds. And we're obviously spending a lot of that time checking out the coves. What we did today is we started out on the outside of the cove. And then we worked our way in following a creek and now we are done with the creek and we're just essentially fishing 13 14 foot of water looking for stake beds and you run up into fish not a lot of fish nothing like you see in the summer that's interesting so you might hit a you might have hit 10 stake beds and not find a darn thing and then all of a sudden boom you hit one that has one fish you catch it and you move on so i don't know what everybody else is experiencing but for us, Kentucky Lake is a very daunting lake, very, it's a very large lake, so there's a lot to learn. And we're doing it mostly with live scope and not side imaging, which is probably the easier way to do it. But live scope answers the question real quick for us. Is there fish on it or no, move on. So if we side image those marks, we have to go and now identify whether there's fish on there. So we're not killing every spot we fish. We'll catch one or two, then we'll move on. So let me give you some backstories on day two before we get on here to day three. We killed the trolling motor batteries, the lithium batteries, because we trolled the entire day at Mach 10, marking everything. We marked over 500 marks in that particular cove. So we already knew that was going to probably be our cove that we were going to start at. But on day three, which is what you're seeing right here, we decided to venture even further south for another cove. Actually, two coves we went to in this episode. You hear that, folks? We're kind of disappointed that all of a sudden we're catching fish in this cove, too. Folks, we caught fish every single day we were on Kentucky Lake. We always averaged between 9 and 10 pounds each day. We were feeling pretty good about what we were seeing, although we weren't seeing a lot. But when we dropped on them, we caught them every single time. In this particular cove, they were very shallow. And again, we're catching them constantly. We're like, man, where do we want to go? We didn't want the conflict, although it's a good problem to have, no doubt about it. Marcus. We didn't want a dilemma. All right, folks, that's the end of uh, the pre-fish for Kentucky Lake. Tomorrow is game day, and I look forward to it. I'll show a little snippet of game day right now, but Marcus is putting the boat back up. We're getting out of here. All hands on deck tomorrow, 110%. That's the plan, folks. Thanks again for joining. Please subscribe. Three pound fishing, baby. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. Hey, thanks for watching us today. Not the easiest fishing pre fishing, but I'll tell you, we're gonna put it together. We call this day one stuff. Thanks for watching, folks. Please subscribe. Ooh, yeah.